What's up guys, welcome back to another TB video slash vlog. I really do think everybody that has helped me and subscribed to my channel in the past past few months. Excuse my speech, it's kind of slurry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways guys, the whole behalf of this is, this is part two. This is going to be the Walker headers being installed on a 2017 Ford Focus. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, so here it is, the one and grand finale. We can finally start the project that I've been dying to start. Blue spoke to me two seconds ago, and I told her, let me speak, so I had to refilm this. But anyways, uh, here is the bolt right here that got really stripped. It's really bad, if you guys can actually tell. I was almost about to break that. So this socket right here actually came very good and handy if you guys can find these it's actually a really good um bolt loosener to be honest and i use uh one of these tringalas to get it off um you can always use loctite nuts but i don't suggest them uh so i went ahead and i picked up this bag right here and this is for the fusion by the way guys or the focus sorry wow I'm, I'm so used to saying Fusion because I used to have one, but this right here, so they're not as fat, they're actually really thin, but they do work. I'm going to stick the normal one on and this one on, so I'm just going to throw this one away because it's messed up to all angles. I mean, if I put that back on, I'm going to run into the same problem, and then what if this doesn't work again? So, that's the problem. So, I'm definitely not going to put that Loctite nut on there because if I want to change up my muffler in the future, I'm not going to be able to. So I'm going to forget about that and just use these nuts right here because they don't have Loctite on them and they will be a lot more easier to get off. And anyways, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and step in. I got to get this headers off. I got to get the new ones on. I got to get the oxy, oxy sensors off and put them on the new one. It's a lot of work. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that right now. So we're underneath the focus right now. And as you guys can see... These are the two bolts that we got to remove, that one and that one. This one will look a lot different than your guys' though because I actually had to replace one if you guys remember. Um, then we got to take it off these hangers right here, which are right here, this hanger. We got to take them both off and we have to do some work up on the engine, so I'll be right back. So the nut that I'm currently going to get off right now is this one right over here on the passenger side. Gotta stick your tool underneath here. And I really like this grip tool though. If you guys don't have one, you should go get these these uh these grip sockets. They work really good for your car. Alright guys, so just like I said in part one, when you're messing with sensors in general, you want to make sure that you disconnect your negative terminal. Um, that will stop it from sparking or, you know, giving you an error. Because that can happen. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is make sure, for one, your engine is not too hot. Mine is still a little bit warm. So I'm going to leave the hood open for a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this terminal off right here. And then once that terminal is out, I'm going to take off this heat shield. And once I'm done with the heat shield, I'll probably start slowly working my way on getting the bolts that are connected to the headers. Uh, the hardest part is, is trying to figure out how you're going to get the headers out from where they're at right now. Um, I might be able to stick it through here. If I can, that will be dope then I don't have to really worry about it. But you also have to keep in mind that you're watching out for any hoses, wires, anything like that when you're taking something out this big. Um, once it comes out, the new ones go in, the sensors go in the new one, and then we find out if it will throw any air codes. It says it shouldn't, but it does state that you should have a little code reader just in case. Okay, so now where your sensors are at, just like the first one, it's one, they're both connected right about here, right on this little plate. And this plate is located right next to your fuel pump right here. Or your, you know what I mean. So it's right there. This is the blue one right here. 
There's a little pin on the bottom of it, so you got to take it off from the plate. And then it's going to be on this side over here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's going to be like right there. And right in between that is where the plug thing is at. And you have to really press on it and then pull it off. And it should come off. But that's how you get the blue one out and the black one is already out and it's leaning down there somewhere. So that's it for that one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this one so I can get these headers off. I kind of forgot to let you guys know. Um, there's some, one other part, okay? So if you guys are looking down at your cats right here, there is bolts on the bottom of this pan right here, which is this pan. And there's one here and one over there, and then there's one right here on the top, which it's very easy to take out. Very easy. I didn't struggle with it or anything. Make sure you grab those. When you're taking out headers, you kind of want to be careful with all your lines and everything. You want to make sure you're not going to hit any lines, especially this line right here. You want to make sure that this line doesn't get in the way. If it does, don't tug on it because this right here is your fuel line. So if you tug on this line, you're going to get a link. So don't tug on it. I repeat, do not tug on this line. A fire will happen when you're driving. So. Be really, really cautious of this line right here. Um, you can pull it, not not pull it, should I say. Push it upwards if you need a little bit of room. But make sure that you're extremely careful with that line, especially. I can't stress that enough. Um, and then that's all we have to do really is take out these bolts here that are on the headers. And then these headers should be able to come out. If not and I can't fit him through this little gap right here, then I'll figure it out from there. Um, this little plastic part right here is really bendy, so if you have to, you can push it up to get it all the way through. But uh, yeah, just be really careful with lines, please, once again, be very careful with lines. And then, um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get this done, and then we'll come back when we remove all these bolts right here, and we'll show you what bolts we have, how many there is, um, I'm pretty sure I said it in part one, but I'll say it again in part two, and then we'll also show you how to take these sensors off right here and stick them into the new ones. We're back now, finally. Um, we got it off, but the problem is, is that she's a fat puppy, so we also got to be careful of that line right there, the one I was telling you guys about, and it's, it's hitting that sensor, so we're probably going to have to twist it out as well. And then we're going to have to take this thing off because there's no way in hell that these headers are going to fit through <coughs> this little small gap. So um, we're going to do that and then we're going to pull out the headers, put the new ones down, and then get the sensors off of course and put them on the new one and then go ahead and put the new ones down, get them tightened down, and then start the car and see what happens. So yeah, we'll let you know when we get the new ones on. By the way, there is five bolts that connect to this, these headers right here. Two on the bottom, three on the top. So really easy. Only the nut is supposed to come out. If the threading comes out, which is that, then that means that you have a stripped one. So be really, really cautious and really careful. Um, these headers actually don't look too black. Just in the beginning. Down there it kind of looks kind of black. From extra fuel, I guess. But they look pretty clean. For the most part, minus that one and this one, probably. Oh, my finger's covering it up. There it goes. So, yeah. So, that's all we gotta do is make sure that we were careful with that line down there, um, which is a fuel line. And we're probably gonna have to twist it. Headers are on, finally, guys. So, this is where things start to get a little bit loud and weird and, you know, whatever the case may be. But, the heat shield on the other half that was a little bit of uh, not wanting to fit. So we had to drill an extra hole and then we were able to fit the heat shield above it. Um, as far as the sound goes, I'm gonna give you guys a clip. It will be taken tonight, of course, because I need to change out her spark plugs first. She is backfiring and I already know the reason why, because the spark plug is just gone, it's done. And uh, you know, I don't blame it because I do drive rough on that behalf so on that end of that story guys i'm gonna go ahead and let her rest for a little bit because i just barely got home she is still warm and still hot 
So you never want to change out anything that involves the engine when the engine is still hot. Let the engine cool off to, you know, normal heat, which is usually warm or cold. Cold, I would prefer you guys to do it on not warm, not hot, just regular coldness is the best. So I'm gonna let her sit probably for about five hours or so, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change out her spark plugs. And then I'm also going to shove my uh, air filter back in because I have the stock filter right now put back in there. I was trying to diagnose the problem that was going on. So when I lift up these boots, I'm gonna show you guys the spark plugs. I know a lot of you guys are curious um, what happened to that other spark plug in there. Now I know that last time I showed you guys there was oil on it and usually when there's oil on a spark plug, it's either something's not going right in the engine or you have a blown gasket somewhere and motor oil is getting into the spark plug. It can be that case, but I think my case is, is that I was cleaning my valves and I'm pretty sure that was the cause of it from all of the carbon that just got spit out through the exhaust also got into the spark plug. Alright guys, so now I'm outside of the house. I'm currently taking out the spark plug. I know a few of my subscribers wanted to see if the oil stopped. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and then I will show you if it did or not. Because remember this is the cylinder that it happened in. And so far I didn't see anything on the top of this coil. So, didn't look that, oh yeah, look at that guys, clean. So, I guess that makes sense that it, all that carbon was built by me doing my valve cleaner and it just shot into this one. And this is the only cylinder it shot into, but you can see the piston down there. You see a little bit of carbon on it still, but it's all good in the neighborhood. I got these. Arenium spark plugs right here by NGK. Thank you for, uh, you know, letting me know I can try these and they work out fine and your guys' focuses. That's pretty dope. I was going to try the diamonds, but I decided I didn't want to, like, wait for them. So I just went ahead and got these because they're, they're local to me, so why not? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch these out guys. I gotta get them in. I gotta go visit my aunt before she goes back to Arizona. And this is pretty much all. The headers are down in. Everything is good. So if you guys wanna continue hearing Blue and what she sounds like now, make sure you guys go ahead and smash the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell on the side. Like this video and if it's not your cup of tea, then go ahead and smash that hate button. Because, like I always say, I love my haters just as much as I love my lovers. Also, guys, make sure you guys share this video and plenty of my other videos if you haven't seen them yet. Let's work our way up to a thousand subscribers. Giveaway will be happening very shortly. Merchandise is coming very soon. And always, don't forget, guys, if it ain't tough, it's not worth building. This is Tough Bills. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, I've always been wondering what the hell this sound is that's coming from my car after driving it. I know it's a little hot. I think, personally, it's my coolant because once the car is completely cold, it stops doing that weird noise coming from the engine bay.
that noise. If you guys just heard that, that's the noise that's going on right now underneath my hood. So I don't know what that is, but when I go towards the coolant, which I'll, I'll take a video of it right now actually, and then I'll show you guys what the sound is actually coming from. And then maybe you guys that have a focus out there, maybe yours makes the same noise when it cools down. So maybe it's just shooting coolant into the engine and that's what we hear. I don't know, but that noise is weird. So, um, basically this noise is, is coming from, I don't have my car keys, so I have to go back and get them. Did you guys just hear that again? All right, let me know what it is. I'm really curious. I'm coming home.